Hello, I'm Herb with the Los Angeles International Fern Society. And today I'm going to be talking about the 18 different species of platysariums, also known as staghorn ferns. Platysariums come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. You can see this very large one here, or this dwarf one, which is about 6 inches across. And then there's some very picturesque ones like this one at the Huntington Library. Platysariums are in the Polypodiaceae family, which includes ferns. Staghorns are ferns because they propagate from spore, not from seeds. Actually, there are two ways to propagate staghorn ferns. One is from spore, and the second is from volunteers or pups. To me, platysariums are exciting because they're epiphytes. They live on host plants like trees, but they're not parasitic. Now, there's 18 different species, but I'm not going to bore you with reading them all. I will show them all into you individually. And in addition to that, there's very many uh, hybrid possibilities where you combine two or more species by combining the spore. Staghorns come from different parts of the world and can divide them into three natural groups. There's the Java Australian group, the Mayan Asiatic group, and the Afro-American group. When looking at the anatomy of a staghorn fern, you have the fertile fronds which stick up like antlers and they carry the spore. Then you have the shield fronds which provide their own function. The shield fronds can be divided into three different shapes. The ball, the basket, and the ring. And they're all adaptations to their environment. The ball is generally found in very wet climates which to keep the moisture out. Then there's the open basket, which catches the rain and debris from above. Then there's the ring, that, which is a basket that grows circular all the way around the tree. When looking at different species of platysariums, first we have the Elsa corny. This one is native to Madagascar, and I can tell that because of the deep ripples in the shield fronds. And we also have the Elsa corny, which is native to Africa. And notice how the shield fronds are smooth on this one, making it a little bit different from the Elsa corny from Madagascar. Next is one of my favorites. It's the Andenum, which comes from the Peru and Ecuador. It's the only one that grows natively in the Americas, and it grows on the eastern slopes of the Andes, which is a dry forest area. Next we have what I call is probably one of the truest bifurcatum we'll find. It's got very long and narrow fertile fronds. Uh, most of your bifurcatums have been hybridized slightly to the point where they got fatter fertile fronds. Bifurcatums have the most cultivars. Currently I recognize about 32 cultivars of the bifurcatum species and we're probably adding more on a regular basis. So it's, until we get DNA testing, we can eliminate a lot of duplications at that time, I suspect. Next is the coronarium. It gets its name from its uh, shield fronds, which grow like a ring around the tree. And when they're fully established, they grow up and they look like a crown. Next is the elephantotus. Notice how the fertile fronds are hanging down like elephant ears. Next is the Elysiae. It has wide uh, fertile fronds and they're distinctly unique in the sense that they consistently only have two tips. Next is the Helii, which has a very wide frond. Also, the shield fronds are like a ball. They really make it difficult to get water inside the water of the plant. There are many cultivars within the Helii species. The Jimmy, the Houlihans, the Delight, the Bloomy Eye, the Panama, Siam Willy, Jenny, May Eye, and Black. Next is the Grande, which can grow to be a very large staghorn fern. It's unique in the sense that it has two spore patches for each lobe. Next is the Superbum, which is very similar to the Grande, except it only has one spore patch per lobe. 
Next is the Wande, very similar to the Grande and the Superbum and the Holtumii. Each fertile frong has two lobes, and the lobe has one spore patch each lobe. One lobe is elevated, and the other is below it, marked by A and B. Next is the Holtumii, which is very similar to the Wande only differs in the sense there's a slight difference in the uh, shield fronds. Next is the Madagascarense, which obviously comes from Madagascar. You, this is unique in the sense the shield fronds has very deeply rippled waffle-like uh, pattern. Next is the Quadra dicotomum. Not a lot is known about it. It's a small staghorn. It tends to go into a dormant stage where it looks like it's dead, and then after, surprisingly, it comes back to life and uh, looks good for another season. Next is a very popular but difficult to grow Ridley eye. It has fertile fronds that stick up like a, like a flower, and the shield fronds are a very tight ball. It's a lot of humidity to, to survive. Next is a Stemaria. There's a lot of variances in the number of tips and the way it's growing, but uh, each fertile frond has at least two divisions, and the, the lobe of the division is where the spore patches are located. Next is the Vichii. It comes from a very arid part of Australia. It, it goes long times, maybe three months without any rain. The true VGI, like we show here, has very long, skinny, fertile fronds. The shield fronds lose their skin, leaving a skeleton. And the theory is that since it's an arid climate, that skeleton collects the dew at night, and that dew drips down to the water of the root ball. Next is the Wallichii. It's difficult to grow in cultivation, so there's not a lot known about it. It has great big baskets for the shield fronds, and the fertile fronds tend to be fan-like. Next is the Wallichnii. Not a lot of people know much about Wallichnii, but they're very easy to grow. They grow about as easily as a bifurcatum. What differentiates them from a bifurcatum is when the shield <coughs> fertile frond grows out from the blood, it's growing edgewise, up and down, as compares to horizontally. And that always differentiates a wallichnii from a bifurcatum. Wallichnii is commonly thought to come from Java, but they also come from Australia. There's an area called Mount Lewis where the Mount Lewis platycerium comes from. Well, that covers our 18 species of platyceriums. In addition to the 18 species, there are many hybrids where you mix the spore from one species with a spore from a second species, and you get a new hybrid. We're going to illustrate some of them at this point. Charles Alford is a very well-recognized grower currently down in Florida. He had an accidental crossing of a couple spore and came up with the... the platycerium called the Charles Alford. The Charles Alford is a cross between the one day and the Ridley eye. Next we have the dull boy. It's a cross between the Madagascan version of the Alsicorni and the, Al and the Madagascarense. Next we have Horn's surprise. Horn was a grower a long time ago. And he came up with a surprise in his greenhouse, so he called it the Horn Surprise. It differs from the dull boy in the sense that the Elsa Corny comes from Africa, and it's a little yellower green, and then it also mixed with the Madagascar Renzi, to call the Horn Surprise. Next is the Roy Vale Platycerium. Roy Vale wrote the hobbyist handbook to platyceriums and is widely considered the Bible in platyceriums. Roy Vale is instrumental in helping protect the growing area of the Andenum down in South America, so it's appropriate that this 
cross of the Madagascanese with the Andenum is properly named for after him. Next is the Diversifolium hybrid. It's a cross between the Bifurcatum and the Helii. You'll notice the very wide fronds of the Helii and the rounded shield fronds of the Helii. Next is the Ella Maria hybrid. It's originally thought that the Ella Maria was a cross between the Stemeria and the Elephantosis, but current DNA testings have shown it to be a cross between the Andenum and the Elephantosis. Next is the Magus, which is a cross between the Vici and the Helii. You can see the silverish color of the Vici. And you can see the rounded shield fronds of the Helii. Normally, a Vici has tall, uh, pointed shield fronds. Next is one of my favorites in my collection. It's called a Mount Kishakud. It's a hybrid cross between the Ridleii and the Cornarium. Next is a Yanid. It's a cross between a Walinkii and a Helii. I took this photograph at the Filoli Gardens up in uh, the San Francisco area. Well, that covers your 18 species and many of the hybrids. There's always new hybrids coming out when you mix spore from two different species. You, you don't know what you're going to come up with. If you like this video and you want to make it available to other viewers, please hit the thumbs up button below and that makes it available to them. I'm going to be coming out with some other videos on specifics about the different species uh, with more detail on each one of those. Uh, hit the subscribe button and you'll be informed when they come out. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.